Hello, and welcome to a special episode of Checkpoint Chat. My name is Alessandro Barbosa. I'm joined by Matthew Figuera. Yes, to what, talk about... What loop are you on? Some stuff. Uh, it, I've lost count. I've lost <laughs> this. I'm on loop infinite at the moment. Yeah, uh, I'm loop a, 29 because I turned 29, so... Oh, no. Oh, you mean in real life? Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's the loops around the sun. What do you think loop, I was talking loop about? Loop 33. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, it's a little, little PS5 uh, exclusive. Yeah, we're here today to kind of round out our thoughts on the latest PS5 exclusive Returnal. If you missed our preview from, when was it, last week at this point, mm -hmm. um, you can check the cards up top. We've got a link to our preview footage, which is kind of like a, I don't know, a, then we had only played about an hour and we were only talking about the first two biomes. I think since then, I don't know how many hours I've put in, but it must be close to like 15, maybe more. Yeah, I'm, I'm about close to 20 hours, I'd say, into yeah. the game. So I have a much um, better idea of what this game is about and how challenging it is <laughs> and its overall structure, actually, which it's, is kind of surprising. Uh, yeah, it's like we understand the game and its structure but we're still trying to piece together the narrative yeah yeah eternal is wild <laughs> so yeah i think that's a that's a good place to to start uh you've finished the game multiple times as yeah. in you've seen credits i've, I've rolled times. credits but that does not necessarily mean that i've finished the game i'm very aware that there's more to do um, I'm just in the process of figuring out how to do said content. It's not not explicit, um, but yeah, getting getting to the point of writing credits is as simple as well. Inverted commas, simple. <laughs> yeah, of, simple. You know, getting through the game itself. Mm -hmm. um, but I suppose just to give some context, if you don't know what Returnal is, uh, Returnal sees you taking the role of a character called Celine, who essentially crash lands on a planet. Mm -hmm. um, I don't and, actually you know, know what the planet's called. I actually don't know either. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, we should know this. <laughs> um, but basically, it's a roguelite. So the idea is you do runs through this planet and you, you, know, you get progressively better and you try, you know, get as far along through this planet as you can. Mm -hmm. But naturally, in a game like this, you die and you, you reset to the beginning. Um, and that's very integral to the story because Celine is essentially aware that you know, she is stuck in this loop, a bit, you know, the whole Groundhog Day effect. And she's just trying to figure out, like, how the hell do I get off this planet? Like, what, mm. first of all, what's going on and how to get out of this loop? Like, I'm trapped here. Mm. I think uh, one of the best parts is that because she's aware of the loop and she's aware of the the planet kind of restructuring itself, mm. like, it's, it's always fun when she gets into a room and she's like, oh, it's different now. Um, yeah. But I, I think the my favorite part of... The structure of the story of this game is Celine coming across dead bodies of her, like her own <laughs> dead body, and it's very morbid. Past or, yeah, like past audio logs, and you get very different, very different Celines based on mm. the audio logs. Some you'll have where she's still like very inquisitive about what's going on about, around her. Then you'll get a very frustrated audio log, and then sometimes you'll get audio logs from a Celine that is completely gone off the deep end, like talking yeah. about, you know, deities and mystical beings and stuff. And mm. Celine hearing herself say that is like, she feels pity for herself, kind of like what that person yeah. had to endure to get to that point. But also she, it, it, it kind of like grounds her, like how long has she been here? She has yeah. no real indication of how many times she's done this loop, which is, terrifying it like ties into this kind of undertone of horror that is going on throughout the story which is yeah cool. it's like horror and unknown because even i think you raised it in our either on the podcast or the preview um it's not a matter of it's like it's not a linear affair like mm. you you playing as your you know inverted commas your celine on your journey with her you know like uh, i've heard this audio log before i've done this before but there's clearly some time loop shenanigans going on because the audio logs sound like they're either her in the immediate future or her clearly in like the far future, mm -hmm. having been stuck in this loop for a very long time. So yeah, it's 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 just interesting. Like the the story is very cryptic. Um like Extreme, nothing is yeah. nothing's explicit. Like I'm still trying to wrap my head around some some things that have happened. Um but I think that's 
part of the charm of the game is it's the fact that it's a roguelite and you're you incentivized to keep replaying it because you're like well i want to know what why is she here yeah like, will she get out of this loop so yeah and part of that is, are these um small like sequences you get to play out in first person um mm. in this house uh and those are really man it, each one feels like it's revealing something to me and i'm like oh, okay it's going to turn a corner here and i'm going to understand and then it just throws something new no. at me. <laughs> and it's just like and each sequence is so like vastly different i mean i got mm. to the third one yesterday and i was like oh okay <laughs> This is okay. <laughs> this is entirely different. This is not what I was expecting. So yeah, they, they are very creepy as well. I think you said it uh, best. They've got real Silent it, Hill PT vibes. It reminds me of PT. Yeah, it's yeah. just that that old house, the lighting, um, and it's eerie, and the sounds are weird. Creepy. And yeah. I've never been as scared as I've have in this game of an astronaut in my life. <laughs> um, <laughs> like you'd think, astronauts, you know, good good people, friendly looking people, Jesus. not in this game. Jesus terrifying Christ. that like that void of the helmets is just like the void and and the, and the sound <laughs> I, well speaking of sound this game is audio and visual design are just unbelievable Top notch, yeah. yeah really really good stuff i mean i've been playing with headphones as much as i can because the game actually recommends it mm. um and i've been using the uh 3d audio, 3D audio from the, yeah. the playstation and like i said in the preview there's only a handful of PlayStation games, I feel that actually use that feature properly. The rest sound mm. just really terrible. Um, yeah, Returnal uses it really well. It's proper, proper good. The way you can hear like crumbling structures behind you or bullets mm. coming from direction. I mean, it's really hard sometimes to pinpoint because there's so much happening on screen. There's a lot once. going on. Yeah. Yeah, but it. I mean, it works. And the the weird uh, in some biomes are like wet feeling yeah. that you get from the sound <laughs> that's the best way i can describe it it's like my god you hear like squishiness and i know it yes, makes you feel real bit, off-putting but um, disgusting yeah <laughs> but it's done really well it's it's some real like body horror through sound design it's yeah. kind of fantastic i think i think just on that it's it's i suppose also good to point out that returnal is like the first proper ps5 exclusive since launch Mm, um, mm. And it actually does a pretty good job of showcasing, you know, not just the power of the PS5 because the game not only runs smooth, loads quickly, you know, etc. Et oh my god, it loads so fast! It's it loads very unbelievable. Quickly, yeah. But just the, in terms of, so you've already mentioned the 3D audio, but even the the dual sense, it's like the first game outside of Astro's Playroom, for example, where I'm like, I really hope these sorts of features are carried forward in other titles. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. like in Returnal, the, the basic premise is if you half pull down uh, L2, the left trigger, you'll aim down south and you can fire normally. But if you push down all the way, you know, you push through that resistance, you activate an alternate fire. And we, we actually spoke about this in the preview where I, like I said, initially it felt a bit weird, like yeah. I wasn't used to it. But it's unbelievable how after so many hours now, it, it feels so natural. Yeah. Like it's, uh, I can't go back. I, I, I'm, I'm no longer firing alt by accident. Because no. that, that was something that happened initially because I was just, you know, full pressing immediately. But now the mm. muscle memory is there where it's just, it's so, it like you said, it feels natural. Um, mm. And it would be weird going back to a game where that isn't seen as a as a whole other function. It's they, mm. They've somehow made two buttons in one. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think in terms of PS5 hardware, like Returnal's finally a you know triple A title. Although is it triple A? I don't know. That's yeah. That's well, a it's priced question mark. Priced yeah. as a tri so that was the one thing. It's priced as a triple A, and at first I was like, wow, that's you know that's hard for a game that is this sort of structure because yeah. roguelites. You know, if you're talking about Dead Cells, you're talking about Hades. A run in either of those is less than an hour sometimes an mm. hour, you know, once you've really waxed it down. So I was like, well, how do you get a game like Returnal that is meant to be much bigger in scope and not make a run like four or five hours where that's actually just like counterintuitive to a roguelike. Yeah. And at first, for, the, for a very long time, I was under the impression, I was talking to you about it. I'm like, these runs are too long. They, mm. you know, and you you were telling me that your first few runs were like three to four hours. And I'm like, that's yeah. fuck, that's way too long 
It's for like a full like, evening doing but, a run. Exactly. But then I got to a point in the game where I realized I, you were very good about not telling me about this. Like it gets to a point where that structure makes sense and yeah. it kind of keeps within the uh, boundaries of a roguelike not punishing you too much for death. Mm. But also it's weird. It's like, it doesn't feel like a cheap like checkpoint per se, but there mm. is a way that a three to four hour loop makes more sense than it does on paper, which is, yeah. I don't want to get into more of it because it was a real big, I think it was a real good moment in the game, but yeah. I don't have as many qualms with the overall structure of the game that I originally did, it did mm. because the game is hard. So I was just like knowing how far I needed to go. And I was like, I. I just can't envision myself getting there and now I can. Yeah. So. Yeah. But I mean, that's the nature of roguelites, right? It's a, yeah. it's a thing of you, you've, you've played enough. You've started learning enemy movements. You know, which weapons you like, what works in what scenario. Um, and yeah, you just get better at the game and that's how you eventually chip away long enough to, you know, get to the end. Um, but yeah, look on that though, the game, like no beating around the bush the game is challenging it's hard. like yeah i think if if you compare it to it's like a, in my head a, a traditional roguelite is like you'll play the game enough you'll unlock a permanent resource that lets you you know buff your health permanently like i'll just reference hades because that's a recent example that i think a lot a lot of people have played in hades you'll start out with like i don't know if it's 25 or 50 health but over time you'll collect enough resources to buff that up to like 75 or 100 so you have an advantage going into your runs from the get-go mm -hmm. where returnals progression system is like it's it's there but it's very very subtle like at no point do you start a run with 120 percent health whatever. yeah it's like you always start with 100 health your pistol and that's that um i the think the only thing you retain between runs is actually your inventory slots as it's your as inventory tell, slots. Yeah. Yeah, you, you collect uh, ether, which is a permanent thing, yes. but you don't spend that on permanent upgrades. You no. spend that on unlocking items that you'll pick up late in the run. Um, I mean, the most I've seen it used for is getting an item early in the run. At the So there's like, in your starting area, there's always like an obelisk that mm. you can give ether to. And depending on how much, well, you have to give it a certain amount for it to like spit out an item. But and it's always giving you It's a giving new you item really though. good items as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's a cool way to unlock items, but like that happens maybe once every two to three runs. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the time, like I said, you're starting the run and the only thing you have is the same pistol, uh, the same amounts of health, and however many inventory slots you've opened up. But that's it. Yeah. You're back to square one each time. Yeah. No, the only other thing that persists is so each weapon you pick up has um they have a whole range of perks mm. um where they, they essentially unlock the more you use a weapon mm -hmm. so those perks persist um for example i think the the pistol has a perk called snub nose where it does it's stronger but it loses accuracy um so you'll you'll unlock that then your next one you might pick up a pistol with that perk unlocked already yeah uh, but there's a range of them you know there's like i think three to five per weapon that you gradually yes. unlock as you play the game and then they um, randomize based on when, you, when you get a weapon it yeah. randomizes what perks it mixes yeah yeah so look but the game like we've said is is challenging but it's not impossible like that's the that's the joy that comes from roguelites, at least for me, where it's a thing of like, this is impossible until it mm -hmm. just really isn't. You figure it out, you get that that good little punch of dopamine of like, holy shit, I beat that boss. Like, what a rush. Um, but there yeah, there definitely is this curve of your starting area is definitely your hardest. And then as you start gaining uh, upgrades through that, like the biomes that come after that feel less uh, grueling but because yeah. you because you start each run afresh you have to go through that kind of like farming phase in in your mm. starting biome because there are ways to jump to the the Different other biomes, biomes yeah. uh, directly and as i found out um when you get to a new biome it will give you an item that brings up your weapon proficiency to the required level so yeah. weapon proficiency as you kill things, it's like a meter that fills up. And 
uh, it determines the level of weapons that you can find in the world. So if you yeah. have level proficiency five, then all weapons will be five or better. Yeah. Um, so when you go to a new biome, if you aren't at the proficiency that it requires, it immediately gets you up there, but mm. it doesn't give you any um, passive items or no health upgrades. Health upgrades and those yeah. to me are actually more important than weapon mm. proficiency anyway. So like yeah, you it's... have to go through that farming phase. And I found my best runs, the runs where I've got the furthest are where I've been really lucky, well, not lucky, but I've really paid attention in those first biomes and got as many upgrades you, as I can and yeah. then moved on, you know what I mean? Yeah, my, my, so I was telling you before we started recording, my, I've never made it past the first biome and not finished a run. Mm -hmm. I've died plenty in the first biome, but I've been, like any time I've made it out of the first biome with like a pretty solid set of you know health and items, I've always like made it to the end. You're super lucky because I've um, died many times in other <laughs> biomes. Uh, look, I'm fortunate, but I, I think it's what I, the point I'm trying to make though. It's like, it's it's such a, I think one thing we probably should touch on is the high risk, high reward of this game. So like, yeah. even in that of, you can skip straight to the third biome and you'll get the right level weapons, but you might not have the right health and mm. relics to help you, you know, make it through that run. But if you're good, you can do it. Like yeah, it's you, not impossible. If you're all. really good at dodging and you know you know the enemies enough, you can 100% do it. But when you're starting the game out, it's probably best advice to spend some time mm -hmm. just you know farming up some stuff. Especially because like you will get weapons that will do adequate damage to the enemies, but if you don't have health, they will almost one shot you. Mm. Um, oh yeah, and that happens That's, quite frequently. Yeah, so. but I mean, not not only that. There, there are other systems in the game, so you get. Uh, mechanical suit malfunctions so you come across some items for example that um you know there's there's a risk of there's there's a reward but there's mm -hmm. also a risk of causing a suit malfunction mm -hmm. so like you could open up a chest you're like oh cool i got a new weapon however the payoff is now i've got the suit malfunction that is i do 75 percent less damage while i'm not moving okay that's cool. like a or some that's really like, hardcore ones where yeah. it's like you can't pick up new weapons. And you just yeah, like, so um, that one's very subtle. Then you get some like, I, I had one yesterday. The first time I've ever seen it on any of my, of my runs, it's like the map is scrambled. Oh yeah, that's the worst. And that you, is you think that's not going to be bad. Worst. It's so bad. It's, yeah. it's real bad. Yeah, you, yeah. you need that map. <laughs> yeah, especially <laughs> like when you're desperately. scouting for items in, a, in an area, like you need mm. that map. Yeah. Yeah. And then you need to, you need to, um, like meet certain prerequisites to get rid of the malfunction. So mm. some of them are pretty easy, like kill 15 enemies or my favorite is melee, uh, melee kill three enemies. Oh, but then but it, some of them are really challenging. Like some will be like open to containers, which can be a real bother <laughs> if many of the containers are infected as well and will just cause more, more, more malfunctions. malfunctions. Yeah. Um, so stuff like that, it's really cool. And then on top of the risk reward, you also come across <laughs> parasites which are yeah. quite literally these things that give you a pro and a con. A con yeah. So it will be like, I'll increase your, your max health, but I will limit the rate at which you earn proficiency. So it's mm. like, which is more important to you? Or some of them are really hardcore, like uh, we'll fix a malfunction and then detach. But when I detach, I'll take some of your max health. It's like, yeah. oh my be God, like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and once a parasite's on you, you can't get it off. Like. Well, okay, so there, you can get are, it off, but means, you, yeah. you can't negate any of those. If there's any effects attributed to detaching, that will happen. Like yeah. whether you detach with an item, whether you detach with a machine, like it will it will trigger. But then yeah. you can get like passives. I One of my favorite passives is whenever a parasite attaches or detaches, your max health increases. And mm. it's like, okay, cool. Then I know this run is going to be focused on attaching as Getting, many parasites as I can. Yeah and just not really caring about their effects, but finding ways to get them off as well, because mm. that's going to help me. So yeah. there's loads of risk and reward it's, with the game. It's just yeah. all these little micro decisions. I mean, if that's not enough, the, the game's got a currency called, I think it's Oberlatz. Yeah, I think it's Oberlatz. I like saying Oberlatz because so, it sounds funny. Oberlatz. Oberlatz. <laughs> <laughs> so when you kill an enemy, they drop this currency but the currency disappears very quickly. Yes. Yeah. So like when I first started playing the game, it's like, I'll just happily sit far away and chip away at this enemy. Only to realize much later, like I do not have currency to yep. craft any items or buy anything. So again, it's a risk reward of like, 
well, if you choose to get in the thick of battle, you'll get rewarded with currency. If you play safe, like you're actually shooting yourself in the foot. So yeah, it's, and it, it's just it, like, it took a while just, for me to realize how important that currency it's was. It's super important. Like, yeah, yeah, I think when I last played, I really made a point of like, the, the melee system in this game feels real good. Oh, it's so good. But it also, in forcing myself to use the melee weapon, it's like, well, I'm obviously picking up stuff as it drops. Yes. <laughs> so it's super crucial. It's, uh, yeah, I I was really ignoring it. And then every time I got to, uh, some most biomes have places where it's almost like a shop uh, mm. where you can fabricate a lot of items. And I was always like, wow, I can afford nothing here. Something, why is this curve so you know, like mm. unfair. But then I realized you actively have to be thinking about collecting currency. And when you mm. do, it can actually change your run completely. Like yeah. I could, uh, my favorite upgrade spots is increasing your health by 25%. Mm. I have not had, had a successful successful run where I've reached a certain boss or whatever, where I haven't taken that upgrade. That upgrade to me is like uh, crucial. It's, it's crucial, yeah. yeah. Well, health is crucial in the game. It, it, to me, it's like, health and also finding places that increase your protection rate because those mm. two go hand in hand like you can have tons of health but if you don't buff your protection enemies then are still going to take like gonna massive chunks you. of health yeah. away from you so yeah i've had moments where i walk into like a room and there's a mini boss and the, the dude just like one hits me i'm like what yeah <laughs> and you're <laughs> like what happened for that. yeah yeah but I mean, like I said, I've been playing 15 hours. Uh, you've rolled credits. Um, I'm still seeing things that are new, like completely mm. oh. in terms of enemies. I know I haven't found all of the weapons yet. Um, oh, but can I tell you, I've rolled credits. I also haven't found all the weapons. That's wild. <laughs> I've, I've, to me. I've unlocked more than, uh, I'm like 95% sure I've unlocked more than you. Um, I'm also still picking up audio logs though. Oh I really? Runs, I'm still finding different like little snippets of Celine. That's cool. Uh, dialogue, yeah. That's very cool. So uh, look, there's definitely incentive to keep playing mm -hmm. the game. Like I, I know the moment I rolled credits, I was like, I'm definitely not done. Mm -hmm. Like there's still mm -hmm. plenty to unlock and do. So it's sort of like Hades. Like Hades, you, yeah. you finish it once, but to see credits, credits, quote unquote, you need to finish it ten times. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, is is Returnal the same thing? I just yeah, I don't it know. Ten I, times. I mean, based on talking to you, it seems like it's far more obscure. Uh, what it's, you kind of need to yeah. do to get the quote unquote ending of the game, mm. um, and that's cool. I think it's I think it's really cool that there's something to think about. It's not just you know, oh, I have to complete this X number of times. It's like I have to think about what I'm doing in a run to get the right uh, combination of I don't know sequences or events to get the real mm. ending. Um, yeah. And, oh, there's one thing that we never touched on in the preview, which I found a lot now, is that there's a lot of community-driven yes. uh, elements to this game. So mm. there's one uh, fabrication point where you can give up uh, some of the currency, so oblites or ether. And once the collective, like, fraternal community reaches a certain goal or threshold of that, it will give you an item back, a reward, which yeah. is really cool. Uh, there's also this mechanic of avenging other players. Like you'll find Celine's body uh, out in the wild and you can avenge her and gain ether. So that was there the first few days I was playing and now it's just disappeared. I, have, I haven't seen it at all and I don't know. They could have just deactivated I, it for may, the time maybe, being. I don't maybe, know. There was, maybe it was presenting issues. I don't know, but yeah, it, it was definitely there. Like the first time, first few times I played, it was real cool to just come across a body black wall I could just skip this or I can avenge this person mm. and like get a reward for it. And know? that person has like a um, PS online name attached. So it's like, you yeah, avenge so this you know, person. yeah. So you know that they died there. It's almost like the, I mean, people will, will connect the two, but it's like a death stranding sort of thing. You can see the yeah, collective hundred percent of other people. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's true. Especially with that, um, the little collective box that you mentioned earlier about putting currency. I actually had a really cool um, instance with, with that where I put currency in like right at the beginning of one of my runs and then it unlocked in like the final biome. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I was like, damn, like this is the fruit of my efforts paying <laughs> off right now. <laughs> Pay it forward, really coming yeah, into effect. Shit. Yeah. yeah, because yeah. It, is, it is quite a sacrifice. Like it asks for a lot. It's a lot. I mean, here. I think it, it's, you can either give I think it's like ether eight or, ether or something like that. Yeah, oh, I think it's it's either five ether, so you can give ether for obelites or you can just drop off obelites. Yeah. Um, 
for people. And which, I think which is the, hectic, the, yeah. Yeah, I think it's like 200 or 300, which is like, that is a free fabrication on like a large health pack. Yep. That or just or like up, the so. amount of ether that you put in is like the, the same amount you'd need to for power up a regeneration machine. Exactly, so, yeah. So like you're really giving up a lot to kind of give back to the community and hope for something good in return. But it's a, I think it's a cool mechanic. I think mm. it's really fun. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, I think, mm. I don't know if, um, do, we, do you want closing thoughts? Are we still talking oh, about this? Uh, just quickly, <laughs> the daily daily challenge mode, that mode rocks. That mode's it's, fucking cool. It's really cool, except you can only do it literally once. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, it's a daily run. So essentially, I, I <laughs> it gives you a weapon. It gives you certain, um, like, I don't know, perks and passives that you kind of have to, like, work around. Uh, and then you're just put in one biome and the goal is to get to the end of that biome. Mm. And your score is based on enemies killed, areas found, damage you take, highest to adrenaline levels, stuff like that. Mm. It's, it's like, so it racks up a multiplier. Yeah, I know. So the reason I'm like, you can only do it once is because I started around, I was like, oh man, this started poorly. I'm going to quit. Oh no. Like restart it. And it's like, daily challenge done. I'm like, hang on. <laughs> Did <laughs> you actually no hit restart and you just... <laughs> No, I, I, I ended it because like I just want to start again, uh, not knowing that. Mm. So yeah, keep keep that in mind. I, some of them are <laughs> really hard. Points. I was like, I, I got into one because obviously when we were playing, it's, you know, very few people playing. So I logged on and only four people on the leaderboard had posted time. So I was like, fuck yeah, this is my I time to shine. I was first in the world at one stage, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is my time to shine. And I did it and it was so hard. And I came third out of four people. And I was like... <laughs> Wow, I'm really shit I came at this first game. Out of, I came first out of 18 people one day. Nice. So like, it's my crowning achievement. You I'm were the first best in, the in the world, world. at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> they're really fun, though. I, I think they're a nice change of pace. I mean, both times um, I was given weapons that I hadn't even unlocked in the main story. Mm. So it was a cool like preview of stuff like to come. It's like a teaser, yeah. Yeah, and I think they tuned to be really fast and... You're meant to play really fast and loose with it because you're also timed. So you're trying to get mm. through things as quick as possible. So I like it. I think it's a cool addition uh, to the game. I I wish Hades had a daily run, put it that way. Yeah, it, it gives you incentive to just go back and play, you yeah. know, with different uh, conditions and whatnot. I mean, you look at all the really good roguelites, uh, you look at Spelunky. People were playing daily, daily runs in Spelunky for years. Mm. Um, I don't know if they'll do the same with Returnal, but it's cool that it's there and it can it's there, yeah. keep being like added I mean, I don't to and changed up. So yeah. it's very, very cool. I like it a lot. Um, yeah. that could Game's good. Yeah, that could sum up my thoughts on it. It's like, I like this game a lot. This game is hard as hell and it it's, can It's difficult. Me. And it, uh, just, to, just in closing, I, I do have like one or two uh, concerns with it that I feel like mm. we have to point out. Um, so like we, we did mention the runs are long and I know there are ways to mitigate that, but it does still feel a bit long mm -hmm. in the tooth for a roguelite. Like to give up a whole evening for a run, like even last night, I, I got to the second biome and I was like, okay, I, I actually can't carry on because it's late. Mm. <laughs> I really wanted to finish this run. I do like how the um, game's like, if you want to, if you want to like have a checkpoint, just put your console in suspend mode. It's like, um. Uh, okay. okay, cool. Except, uh, so look, this is stuff I'm sure will be patched out eventually, but I've had um, my game hang and mm -hmm. even crash in some instances, which in all fairness, in the first biome, so I didn't lose too much progress. But if that were to happen in the second or third biome after two to four hours, mm -hmm. I would be very, very frustrated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because not only that, the game doesn't do checkpoints. Like, if, you, if you're if you in the third biome and you put your console off for whatever reason, like in South Africa, we have a thing called load shedding. So yeah. it's out of my hand. Sometimes the power is just cut and I boot my game up. It just kicks me right to the beginning of a loop and mm. all that progress is lost. And, um, and, that's, and not, not, that's not out of place in a roguelite, but like in oh, Hades, no, if all. you lose half an hour, that's one thing. Losing three hours is a whole other thing. That's the thing. It's like, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I get it. It's like Hades did it right where it's like you know it's saved by room i can mm. quit in room 20 and come back and it's there you know exactly as i left it returnal just straight up doesn't have it and i do wonder if there's no room to even not by room like room by room basis but like every time you unlock a teleporter or something like is there no means to quick save or do yeah. something just so you can at least pick up you know i mean yeah like, it's like a, it should be a quick save not a place where you can 
like manually save and reload because yeah for know, sure then people just save scum like oh crazy. no no yeah. yeah no no yeah no, no that's not at all what i want but it just like that is probably my biggest gripe of the game of it's a roguelite mm. um roguelites traditionally are meant to be like quick like even though i know the game fairly well now it still takes me a long time to get through a run because mm. like we've said the game's hard you you'll be silly not to poke around and get health and upgrades whatever mm. um unless you like guard mode and you just dodge everything and i mean <laughs> it, it can be really deflating to like farm up really you know well in in whatever starting mm. biome you're in and sometimes that can take close to an hour in itself yeah and then you get like into the next biome and because of randomness you die within the first two minutes and you're just like fuck man you know like yeah it just feels like you've done all that for nothing because you literally have like you start mm. with nothing from that run so yeah i think i mean i don't know if that's something they can tune because i that's deeply integral into the yeah for formats sure. of the game mm. but it is it does feel I can see a lot of people bouncing and being like, this yeah, is too that, much. Yeah. That's my biggest concern. It's because I, I know people who are like 100% down for the third person action shooting because it's a lot of fun. Like mm -hmm. if we haven't stressed that enough, the game is real good. It feels good to do a run. Mm -hmm. But I can see them bouncing off when it's like, oh, like my game crashed or shit, I got so far and like progression is so subtle that i feel that i didn't really achieve anything yeah in that right yeah. now I, so. I i can i can definitely see instances where that would be a concern i mean it was a concern for me i got to a point where it felt like i was making no progress because mm. i was just bashing my head against a wall in a you know at a biome not a boss actually the bosses aren't really sticking points for me it's like getting to the boss yeah it feels a lot like in um, between stuff yeah. demon souls in a way where the areas themselves <laughs> are much more challenging than the eventual like climax of of mm. said area um yeah I, and i mean you know you had far less issues with the game than i did in terms of difficulty so yeah maybe i'm just bad at it but at the same time i was also worse at hades than you were it took me much longer to get my first uh uh clear as opposed to mm. you but at the same time i felt like i was progressing each run because there was stuff i was unlocking this can feel really really hitting you over the head like no just be better because yeah. it's giving you nothing to help you be better well it, like just on that i mean i'm i'm fortunate that like i've had good runs but at the back of my mind i have thought like shit if i were to die now i don't know what my motivation would be to like start a new run immediately yeah. especially like if you've been playing for two to three hours and it's like shit i have yeah. to start this again <laughs> i mean that that was me many many evenings it's just like i don't know if i have it in me to start it again but mm. one thing i will give the game is every time i've had that feeling i'm like oh, let me just do one or two quick rooms here and then i'm in it again like my and brain switched on again yeah there's a reason i went to bed at 2 30 this morning <laughs> yeah it is because you know i walked in as like oh, just one more room one more room just one more okay yeah oh my god it's 2 30 i have to actually the <laughs> action is now. so i mean i mean there were times i was I, I yesterday um i was gonna go out for lunch with my girlfriend and i was literally like okay when i die we'll leave because in my head i was <laughs> oh, like no. i'm gonna die because i'm i'm in a new biome i've never and ended up like playing for another hour and a half because like the run <laughs> was she's just like good. dying on the like, floor like please food. yeah yeah she literally was she's just like i'm so hungry and i'm like i can't <laughs> stop now my brain is wired in here I'm, <laughs> Yeah, so it was Jackson. great. It was great. It, that was actually the point where I beat the third boss for the th first time. And I was just like, like okay, we see, can go for lunch now. If we went for lunch now, I might have missed this. I could have <laughs> because I would have come back and my, my muscle memory wouldn't have been, at, you know, one with Celine, if, <laughs> if anything. But so I, I, I guess that's one thing that works, you know, with its length is like its action is so engrossing. It's, mm. it's really good. What, you, what was your other gripe? You said you had a couple um oh it's it's small stuff like this is really just me nitpicking you know like the, the i think the reason the, the runs can take long is because you'll spend time like really trying to clear a map mm. and sometimes like the icons aren't really explicit in what you're picking up like there are some obvious things but it's not always clear if i've run past the chest whether it's malignant or not mm -hmm. it doesn't mm -hmm. show you and i'm like oh, i wish it just showed me and there are certain like doorways where it's like oh I, I clearly missed this doorway and I go back and I'm like, oh, no, it's blocked. I actually don't have the means to get through this doorway. Like, I wish there were just, it was just a bit more detail than that, that okay. regard. 
Yeah, that's um, fair. But look, it's it's really just me nitpicking. I, I really do like the game. If I had to nitpick, like, it uh, really shows, and this isn't the fault of the game, but it's more the fault of Sony's hardware. Um, it destroys the battery on your DC. <laughs> like this just oh. shows that any game that makes good use of, you know, the controller in all of its ways. I mean, I was getting maybe four or five hours, if that, yeah. battery life out of this thing. It's really bad. Um, and yeah, again, that's not down to the game. The game is making use of the hardware that's available to it. It's just, yeah. it's showing the shortcomings of the controller very early in its life. And that's a bit concerning to me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's going to happen in five years? Am I when that battery, <laughs> my, you know, my controller is going to last like half an hour. Yeah. And that will happen because uh, lithium batteries do die and they age. Just look at your smartphone. So <laughs> I know. yeah, as more games, if Sony wants every game under the sun to make use of this controller correctly, uh, this dual sense ain't gonna last super long. So mm. yeah, that's a bit of a concern. Yeah. But that's not that's not Returnal's fault. Yeah, Overall, I mean, the Returnal, real good. Real good. I like it a lot. Um, mm. I definitely think it is the most like next gen feeling game on the PlayStation yeah. thus far. Like Demon Souls was a great yeah. remake. Astro's Playroom was a cool tech demo. Spider-Man was a good sequel. This feels like the first, this it's is a PS5 actual, game. Yeah, it's like the, I mean like obviously, it feels like a launch IP even though yeah. it's, it's not. This thing um, at launch would have been fucking fire. It, like, it would have, yeah. This would have been a, I mean, when the PS4 launched, Housemark launched Resogun with it and for a long time people were like, this is the game you need to you know, play. Mm. This would have been that, I think. Um, yeah. But I'm glad. Oh, I'm glad they didn't rush out, it. Yeah. Yeah, it's out six months after launch, more or less. And yeah, it's real good. If you've got a PlayStation 5, like, mm. I'd definitely recommend it. 100%, you know, yeah. Keep, keep in mind the, the difficulty spike. Like, if you're the sort of person to bounce off super hard yeah. games. I, I would I say know, it's not you, for everyone in that sense. Yeah. Um, you need to weigh up, like, is it worth investing in it now? Yeah. Up to you. I don't know. But if, if you down for a challenge and a real good... Mm. roguelite like the best examples i've seen is like it's a little bit of control a little bit of metroidvania mm. a little bit of hades and it's like it yeah, really is I can, I can see all of those in one really good game yeah i i think it brings in the best elements of all three of those games but like i think if you aren't down with roguelites this is a really hardcore roguelite so it <laughs> like is not really it's not the opposite where you know a a studio has taken a common genre and for not not dumbed it down but made it more accessible it is the opposite of that like if you bounced from hades because it was too hard this is going to be too hard like that is my view yeah yeah i've seen other people say they had an easier time with this than hades that is not my experience i'm not like, super not my experience <laughs> i hades seems very easy compared to this so you need to be i just feel like you need to be aware of what you're getting into before you spend 70 dollars or one and a half thousand rand and like two hours in you're like well this is super not happening for me you know mm. yeah so, yeah that's uh, sure, that's, that's returnal that's returnal um, thanks again to gamefinity and playstation south africa for supplying his code um we will obviously probably talk more about this on <laughs> podcasts in the coming future which if you don't know we record every week they publish on monday mornings uh you can find us on spotify apple podcast google podcast pocket cast all of those platforms all of the things yeah. yeah and if you're here on youtube then it's also uploaded on youtube so if you like what you see here give it a like subscribe to the channel for more of this sort of content we'd really appreciate yeah. it um and thank you so yeah, much that's it thanks guys we'll see you on the next podcast or the next preview or the next review just next mm -hmm. time we'll see you <laughs> <laughs> thanks cool. matthew thanks thank you goodbye bye <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>